Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today and for those who will listen in later on the archives as well. And we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, it is Saturday, August 27th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar year of 5782. We are in the month of Av. This is the 30th day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. We're going to start off with announcements. Um, actually, um, just to um, remind you, this is the last Shabbat of August. And also, this is the last day of the month of Av. So this evening, we will have Rosh Kadesh service, Rosh Kadesh Elul. Tomorrow will be the first of the month of Elul on the Hebrew calendar. So we're at the new moon, um, and this is what we do with every new moon. And with every new moon is beginning a new month on the Hebrew calendar. So we will also be having Holy Communion this evening. And of course, next Saturday is the first um, Shabbat of the calendar month of September. So we will also have Holy Communion next Saturday. So what's coming up this week? Um, the Bible study, of course, and we are continuing our Bible study through the English Standard Version of the Bible, and we will be completing the book of First Chronicles. We will be reading um, Chronicles chapter 15 to 29 in this upcoming week, and also we meet live in real time on our free conference call.com channel and you're most welcome to join us you can join by phone or you can join by web and to join by phone um, you would find your country's access code I'm, I'm sorry your country's in country number and then dial the access code what i do is i post to the social media platforms of miwi usa usalife.com and I post to Facebook and to Gab. Um, on that announcement you're going to see two links. The first link is the phone link and there's about 80 different nations that have access to our channel for free and this is the free list. Now when you look at the list it says toll for every single nation, including the United States. This is the free list, so um, no one's ever um, paid anything, any tolls to, to join us. So what you would do is you would dial your in-country number, wait for the prompt, then dial the access code and the number sign, and that will bring you into the conference room by phone. Now, if you join by web, you would click you would scroll down to the next link and then click on download either the phone or the web application and then go ahead and run the exec um, and then follow the prompts into the conference area. You'll find that there's a built-in microphone, a chat area, also a camera and a whiteboard. So it is all set up as a conference room. We meet live and in real time every Tuesday evening. Currently, we're meeting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'd love to have you come come fellowship with us. We, we lift up prayer requests. We're actually doing a class currently, and you can join in on that as well. It's usually very good discussion that goes on, so come join us on Tuesday evenings. The other thing that we have done with this channel is we have hosted other ministries, such as music ministries, writing ministries. So if that is something that you do uh, for the kingdom of heaven and you would like for us to host you, you can certainly reach out to me and I can work something out. We do have the means to record MP3 recordings and MP4 recordings. So we would definitely be able to accommodate you. And if you choose to try to access before Tuesday evening, um, just to see that you have access, that is fine. By all means, please, please try that. And if you're having any problems, you can contact me and we'll try to troubleshoot. Uh, you will know um, that you have accessed, of course, if you get into, if you're going by web, that you've, you've 
you will see the inside of the conference room. And also, if you join by phone, uh, it will say the host has not yet joined and, and it will proceed to play music. But you will know at least that you have successfully accessed the conference area. And that is all I'm going to say about that. That is our announcements for today. So we're going to open with our opening prayer and invite the Holy Spirit in to lead the entire Shabbat service. Avina Malkino, our Father, our King, we thank you for today. We thank you first and foremost for the breath that you put into our lungs each and every day and you wake us up every day. You are the lifter of our heads. You are our creator. You are our heavenly father. And we give you honor first and foremost. We thank you for the ability to be together, to worship you, to be in your presence. It's so humbling to be in your presence. And Father God, we thank you for this day that you have sanctified us holy. Father God, we know that you created everything in six days and you rested on the seventh. And that was a perfect example by a perfect father for us to follow. And this is Saturday. This is the seventh day of our week and it is the Shabbat. It is the Sabbath. And this is the day that you have sanctified as holy. We ask your Holy Spirit to come and lead us, guide us, direct us. We love your presence and your in your leadership, Holy Spirit. Open the eyes of our heart, open the ears of our heart that we may be receptive to the word of God and carry it with us in our daily walk. We give you our praise, our honor, and all the glory belongs to you. In the mighty name, the name above all names, Yeshua. Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen, and Amen. And in Exodus chapter 20, beginning with the eighth verse, it says, Remember Yom Shabbat to keep it holy, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to Adonai your God. In it you shall not do any work, not you, nor your son, your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, your cattle, nor the outsider that is within your gates. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, this sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Thus Adonai blessed Yom Shabbat and made it holy. And this indeed is the Sabbath. The Lord's greatest commandments are found in Deuteronomy chapter Ooh, uh, I'm sorry, chapter six, beginning with verse four, and, and it goes from verse four to verse nine. You can follow along. We're going to begin it in Hebrew. This is the Lord's greatest commandment, and Yeshua, when questioned by the Pharisees, also stated this as the Lord's greatest commandment. Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kivot. Malhuto Leolam Vayad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God. Adonai is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. And you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down. And when you rise up, find them as a sign on your hand. They are to be as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And Yeshua declared the second greatest commandment to be, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It is also stated the entire Torah and prophets hang on these two commandments. Join with me now. Uh, in the Amidah, standing before God, we're going to say three of the blessings. The first one is the patriarchs. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, and awesome God, God most high, who bestows loving kindness and creates all who remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings Redeemer to their descendants. 
for the sake of his name, in love, King, helper, savior, and shield. Blessed are you, Adonai, shield of Abraham. And the second blessing is God's might. You are mighty forever, Lord, giving life to the dead. Great is your saving power. He sustains the living with steadfast love and with great compassion gives life to the dead. He upholds the fallen, heals the sick, sets the captives free, and keeps faith with those who sleep in the dust. Who is like you, master of might? And who can compare with you, O king who brings death, restores life, and causes salvation to flourish? You are faithful, faithful to revive the dead. Blessed are you, Adonai, who gives life to the dead. And the third blessing is holiness. And the Hebrew word for that is Kedusha. And remember, holy is Kadosh. You are holy and your name is holy. And holy ones praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. Matavu, how lovely. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob, and your dwellings, O Israel. Because of your great loving kindness, I will bow down towards your holy temple in awe of you. Adonai, I love the house where you live, the place where your glory dwells. As for me, I will bow in worship. I will kneel before Adonai, my maker. As for me, my prayer to you, Adonai, is for a time of favor. O oh God, in your great love, answer me with the truth of your salvation. In Etzkayim, the tree of life declaration, we say this of the Torah. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and happy are those who cling to it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are shalom. Bring us back to you, Adonai, and we will return, renew our days as of old, Bayam Hahu, in that day. And it is said, Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Akkad, and his name Akkad, E-C-H-A-D, Akkad, means one or a composite oneness. May God's great name be magnified and sanctified, amen, in the world that he created by his will, and may he establish his kingdom, cause salvation to sprout, and may he bring the Messiah closer, amen, in your lifetime and in your days, and within the lifetime of the entire house of Israel, speedily and soon and stay, amen. May his great name be blessed forever and ever, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, uplifted and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed be he who is beyond all blessing and song, praise and consolation spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from heaven and life upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. May he who makes peace in his heights make peace upon us and upon all Israel, and say, Amen. And the blessing of Messiah, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melaka Olam, Asher Neten Lanu Devar Hakayim Mashiach Yeshua. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the word of life, Messiah Yeshua. Say with me now the the Lord's prayer, Messiah's prayer. Our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar to gather the children of Israel together to worship. We're going to sound the shofar to call us to worship at this time. I am going to pause it now for you to go listen to some praise and worship songs. Yes, we do praise and worship as well, um, but I never have included it in this recording. Um, so we, there was a, apparently, there was a lot of problems with, with 
music being incorporated in services in the past. So when we started doing it, we just started doing it without including it in the actual recording just to avoid any issues of where we're posting to and, and where we're uploading to. Um, because as you know, we do also upload to YouTube currently as well. So just to avoid any issues, we have never done that. However, we do praise and worship. Praise and worship is, is one of the most important elements of service. We are created to praise and worship our creator. So yes, we do praise and worship. Just want to let you know that. Um, what I do when I post um, to the four social media platforms is I will post a series of songs. Then I will post part one and two of Shabbat and another series of songs. So you can use them to click on to for this period of time that we're pausing to do praise and worship. There is a positive to this. I always look for the silver lining. Um, the positive part of this is if you click on to the links, it will take you right to the actual artists, YouTube pages, um, and uh, their YouTube account. So you can listen to the song there, but also you can get familiar with these wonderful artists that give us such anointed praise and worship songs and they have links a lot of times they have links onto how to purchase their music so by all means enjoy uh support what they do and so there's the positive end of things so i'm going to pause it now for you to go ahead and listen to some praise and worship and then we will come back with the torah portion and then do a recap of the torah then do the half tour and then do a recap of the first half of Shabbat and take a short break and then we will go into part two. But for now we're going to pause it so you can do some praise and worship. Okay, this week's parasha is Ra'e and it's it's R E apostrophe E H and it means behold or see. And we are going to be covering chapters 11 verse 26 through chapter 16 verse 17 of the book of Deuteronomy. So we're going to begin that now. Blessing or curse set before you. Remember, um, as we left off um, last week, Moses is still addressing the people. He also let them know that Adonai wants to bless his children. Um, but now we're going to go into blessings, blessing or curse in, in the beginning of this. See, I am sending before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you listen to the mitzvah of Adonai, your God, that I am commanding you today. But the curse, if you do not listen to the mitzvah of Adonai, your God, but turn from the way I am commanding you today to go after other gods you have not known. Very strong theme here um, and very strong reiterance of Moses over and over warning the people not to worship other gods, not to fall into the ways of the world that were they were about to enter, the world around them. So this should be a message to us. It is that important. That has not changed. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not share us with other gods or idols. We are to worship him and him only. Amen? Amen. Now, when Adonai, your God, brings you into the land you are going in to possess, you are to set the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. Are they not across the Jordan toward the west in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah opposite Gilgal besides the Oaks of Moray? For you are about to cross over the Jordan to go in to possess the land and now your God has given you. You will possess it and dwell in it, and you will take care to do all the statutes and ordinances that I am setting before you today. Chapter 12, The Place He Chooses. These are the statutes and ordinances that you are to make sure to do in the land that Adam, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You must utterly destroy all the places where the nations that you will dispossess 
serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. You are to tear down their altars, smash their pillars, burn their Asherah poles in the fire and cut down the carved images of their gods. And you are to obliterate their name from that place. You are not to act like this toward Adonai, your God. Rather, you are to seek only the place Adonai, your God, chooses from all your tribes to put the name, to put his name to dwell. There you will come. There you are to bring your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, the offering of your hand, your vow and free will offerings, and the firstborn of your herd and of your flock. There you and your households will eat before Adonai, your God, and rejoice in every undertaking of your hand as Adonai your God blessed you. You will not do all the things as we are doing here today, everyone doing what is right in his own eyes, for you have not yet come to the resting place and the inheritance that Adonai your God is giving you. But when you cross over the Jordan and settle in the land that Adonai your God enables you to inherit, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you, you will dwell in safety. Then the place that Anai your God chooses to make his name dwell, there you are to bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, the offering of your hand, and all your finest vow offerings that you vow to Adonai. Then you will rejoice before Adonai your God, you and your sons and daughters, your slaves and maids, and the Levite in your towns, for he has no portion or inheritance among you. Be careful that you do not offer your burnt offerings in any place you see. <clears throat> Rather, do so only in the place Adonai chooses in one of your tribes. There you are to offer your burnt offerings, and there you are to do all that I am commanding you. However, you may slaughter and eat meat within all your gates, whatever your souls desire, according to the blessing Adonai your God has given you. Either the unclean or clean may eat of it as they would a gazelle or and or an or deer, but you are not to eat the blood. You are to pour it out on the ground like water. You may not eat within your gates the tithe or your grain or new wine or oil or the firstborn of your herd or your flock or any of your vow offerings that you vow or your free will offerings or the offerings of your hand. Rather, you are to eat them before Adonai your God in the place Adonai your God chooses, you, your son, and your daughter, your slave and maid, and the Levite within your gates, and you will rejoice before Adonai your God in every undertaking of your hand. Be careful that you do not neglect the Levite as long as you live on the earth. When Adonai your God enlarges your territory as he has promised you, and you say, I want to eat meat because your soul craves meat, then you may then you may eat meat, all your soul's desire. If the place Adonai your God chooses to put his name is too far from you, then you may slaughter any of your herd and flock that Adonai has given you as I have commanded you, and you may eat within your gates all your soul's desire, just as the gazelle or heart is eaten, and that's H-A-R-T is eaten, so you may eat it. The unclean and clean alike may eat it. Only be sure that you don't, do not eat the blood, for the blood is the life, and you are not to eat the life with the meat. You are not to eat it. You are to pour it out on the ground like water. You are not to eat it, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, when you do what is right in Adonai's eyes. Only the holy things and vow offerings that, that are yours are you to take and go to the place that Adonai chooses, you are to offer your burnt offerings, the flesh and blood, on the altar of Adonai your God. The blood of your sacrifices is to be poured out on the altar of Adonai your God, but the meat you are to eat. Take care and listen to all these words that I am commanding you, so that it may go well with you and your children after, after you forever when you do what is good and right in the eyes of Adonai your God. When Adonai your God cuts off before you the nations that you are going in to dispossess, when you have dispossessed them and settled in their land, be careful not to be trapped into imitating them after they have been destroyed before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how do these nations serve their gods? I will do the same. 
You are not to act like this toward Adonai your God, for every abomination of Adonai which he hates, they have done to their gods. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. So again, he's warning them. This is repeated warnings. But as we know, if you have been following uh, following us in the Bible study, you know that they actually did fall into all of this and uh, get into quite a bit of trouble, get carried off into captivity. Um, so they they do lose sight of all of what Moses is saying generations down the line. Chapter 13, beware of false prophets. See, there was always warning of this even way back then. Um, so this is real important to be aware of today. Whatever I command you, you must take care to do. You are not to add to it or take away from it. Here's this statement here. Uh, because this is the word of God that he is delivering to the people. We are not to add to it. We're not to subtract from it. That is also restated in the Brit Kadeshah, the New Testament, uh, in the book of Revelations. To not add or sub subtract to the word of God. Suppose a prophet or a dreamer of dreams rises up among you and gives you a sign or a wonder. And the sign or wonder he spoke to you comes true while saying, let's follow follow other gods that you have not known and let's serve them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for Adonai your God is testing you to find out whether you love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So this, what, he, what he's saying is this prophet may, may prophesy or say something's going to happen and it happens. That doesn't mean that you should follow him to, to, to fall away from from Adonai and serve other gods. You are never to do that. So that is a false prophet leading you astray. Adonai your God will follow, will follow and him you will fear. His mitzvah you will keep, to his voice you will listen, him you will serve and to him you will cling. The prophet or dreamer of dreams must be put to death for he has spoken falsehood against Adonai, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery to entice you from the way Adonai, your God, commanded you to walk. So you will purge the evil from your mess, midst. Now, we don't do that today. It's just you need to be aware and be discerning of what is true and what is not true. Know the word of God. So back in the day, in the ancient day, these people would have been put to death. Suppose your brother, your mother's son, or your son or daughter, or the wife of your, of your bosom and your best friend of your own soul misleads you secretly saying, let's go and serve other gods that you and your fathers have not known from among the gods of the peoples around you, near you, or far off from you, from one end of the earth to the other. You are not to give in or listen to him. Your eye is not to pity him and you are not to spare or conceal him. Instead, you will surely put him to death. Your hand should be the first against him to put him to death and afterwards the hand of all the people. You are to stone him with stones to death because he tried to entice you away from Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. Then all Israel will hear and be afraid and never again will they do such an evil thing as this in your midst. And again, we don't stone people in today's world but we do need to be aware these people do exist these people do try to entice uh and entice the people of god away from god into the ways of the world and make it seem like oh there's no harm in in, in doing this well if it's an abomination to god if it was an abomination to god before he's not going to change his mind just because we're in the 21st century suppose you hear it said in one of your cities which Adonai your God is giving you to dwell in, that worthless fellow, fellows have gone out from among you and enticed the inhabitants of their city, saying, let's go and serve other gods that you have not known. Then you are to investigate, search out and inquire thoroughly, if indeed it is true and the matter certain that this abomination has been done in your midst. You will surely strike down the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying it 
and all that is in it and its livestock with a sword. You are to gather all its plunder into the middle of the street, and you are to burn with fire the city and all its plunder. All of it to Adonai, your God. It will be a ruin forever. It shall never be built again. Nothing from the band should cling to your hand, so that Adonai may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show you mercy and have compassion on you and multiply you, just as he swore to your fathers. When you listen to the voice of Adonai, your God, keeping all his mitzvah that I am commanding you today. Doing what is right in the eyes of Adonai, your God. Chapter 14, clean foods for holy people. So now we're, we're going to get into kashrut again um, a, a little bit because that was already um, that was already um, given to the first generation. So so Moses is, is reiterating all of this to uh, to the people. You are the children of Adonai, your God. You are not to cut yourselves or shave your, your foreheads forehead for the dead for you are a holy people to Adonai your God from all the peoples on the face of the earth Adonai has chosen you to be his treasured people you are not to eat any detestable thing these are the animals you may eat the ox the sheep the goat the deer the gazelle the robot the wild goat the ibex the antelope and the mountain sheep among the animals you you may eat any animal that splits the hoof the hoof completes completely split in two and choose the cut. Get of those that chew cut, chew the cut or have a split hoof, you are not to eat the camel, the hare and the rabbit, because they chew the cud but do not split the hoof. They are unclean to you, the pig because it splits the hoof but does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. You are not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. Of all that are in the waters, these you may eat. Whatever has fins and scales, you may eat. Whatever has fins and scales. But whatever does not have fins and scales, you are not to eat. It is unclean to you. You may eat all clean birds, but these are the ones you are not to eat. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the red kite, the black kite. In any bird of prey of any uh, of that kind, every raven of any kind, the ostrich, the owl, the seagull, a hawk of any kind, the little owl, the great owl, the white owl, the pelican, the Egyptian vulture, the cormorant, the stork, a heron of any kind, the, the hoopoe, and the bat. All winged insects are unclean to you. They are not to be eaten. You may eat any clean bird. You are not to eat anything that dies of itself. It could be diseased, and, and, and that, that's very simple, um, simply one of the reasons that you can see. Uh, you certainly don't want to ingest something that might have been diseased. You may give it to the outsider within your gate so that you may eat it, or you may sell it to a foreigner, for you are a holy people to Adonai your God. You are not to boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Tithe and remember the Levite. You will surely set aside a tenth of all the yield of your seed that comes from the, the field year by year. You are to eat the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your oil, and the firstborn of your herd and flock before Adonai your God in the place he chooses to make his name dwell so that you may learn to fear Adonai your God always. Now suppose the way is too long for you, for you cannot carry the tithe because the place Adonai your God chooses to set his name is too far from you. When Adonai your God blesses you, then you are to exchange the tithe for, tithe for silver. Bind up the silver in your hand and go into the place that Adonai your God chooses. You may spend the money for whatever your soul desires, cattle, sheep, wine, strong drink, or whatever your soul asks of you. Then you will eat there before Adonai your God and rejoice, you and your household, but you are not to neglect the Levite within your gates, for he has no portion of inheritance with you. At the end of every three years, you are to bring out all the tithe of your produce in that year and store it within your gates. Then the Levi, because he has no portion or inheritance with you, along with the outsider, the orphan, and the widow within your gates, will come and eat and be satisfied so that Adonai, your God, may bless you in all the work of your hand that you do. Chapter 15, Shemitah, Cancellation of Debts. And this is a Shemitah year that we're here 
in this year. At the end of every seven years, you are to cancel debts. This is how you are to cancel debts. Every creditor is to release what he has loaned to his neighbor. He must not force his neighbor or his brother to repay for Adonai's debt cancellation has been proclaimed. <laughs> I don't think that would go very well with a banking system. Um, they wouldn't like that too much. Every seven years, if your debt, your debt is canceled, that's it. You don't owe them anything or anyone that you're indebted to. Uh, a foreigner you may force, but your hand is to release whatever your brother owes you. However, there should be no poor among you, for Adonai will surely bless you in the land Adonai your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. If only you would carefully listen to the voice of Adonai your God, being careful to do all these mitzvah, these mitzvah uh, that I am commanding you to do today. For Adonai your God will bless you as he promised you, so you, you will lend to many nations, but not borrow. You, you will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is a poor man among you, any of your brothers within any of your gates in your, in your land, Adonai your God is giving you, you are not to harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother. Rather, you must surely open your hand to him and you must surely lend him enough for his need, whatever he is lacking. Watch yourself so there is no unworthy thing in your heart, saying the seventh year, the year of canceling debt is near, and your eye is evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. Then he may call out to Adonai against you, and it will be a sin upon you. You must surely give to him, and your heart is not to be grieved when you give to him. For because of the thing, Adonai your God, because of this thing, Adonai your God will bless you in all your work and in every undertaking of your hand. For there will never cease to be poor people in the land. Therefore, I am commanding you, saying, you must surely open your hand to your brother, to your needy and poor in your land. If your fellow Hebrew, a man or woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year you are to set him free. When you set him free, you are not to send him away empty-handed. You are to surely provide for him from your flock and threshing floor and wine press. As Adonai your God has blessed you, you are to give to him. You will remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and Adonai your God redeemed you. Therefore, I am commanding you this thing today. Now, if he tells you, I will not go away from you because he loves you and your household since he is well off with you, then you are to take an all and put it through his ear to the door, and he will be your servant forever. And to your female slave, you are to do the same. It, it should not seem hard to you when you set, set him free from you, for he has served you six years. Double the value of a hired worker, so Adonai your God will bless you in all that you do. All the firstborn males that are born in your herd and your flock, you are to consecrate to Adonai your God. You are to do no work with the firstborn of your herd or shear the firstborn of your flock. You are to eat it before Adonai your God year after year in the place Adonai chooses you and your household. But if it has any blemish, it is if it is lame or blind or has any serious blemish, you are not to sacrifice it to Adonai your God. You are to eat it within your gate, the unclean and the clean together, just as they eat the gazelle or deer. Only its blood you are not to eat. You must pour it out on the ground like water. Chapter 16, and we're just going to go up to um, the end of this Torah portion, which is, is um, just to the 17th verse. We will pick up next week at with Parashat Shoftim with the 18th verse of the 16th chapter. Three harvest festivals observe the month of Aviv and keep the Passover to Adonai your God. For in the month of Aviv, Adonai your God brought you out from Egypt by night. Now, of course, the biblical months, the, the names were changed. Um, this would be Nisan. You are to sacrifice the Passover offering to Adonai your God from the flock and the herd in the place Adonai chooses to make his name dwell. You are not to eat hamats. Well, that would be leaven or yeast um, with it. For seven days, you are to eat matzah with it, the bread of affliction. 
for you came out from the land of Egypt in haste. Do this so that all the days of your life you will remember the day when you came out from the land of Egypt. No hammocks should be seen with you. No yeast in all your territory for seven days. And none of, none of the meat you sacrificed on the, on the evening of the first day may be left over until the morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover offering within any of your gates that Adonai your God is giving you. That sacrifice was done outside of the gates. And Yeshua, when we look at that as a type and shadow, Yeshua, the crucifixion, crucifixion took place outside of the gates. They were ready for the Passover, but he was, he was crucified outside of the gates. Rather, at the place at a night your God chooses to make his name dwell there, you will sacrifice the Passover offering in the evening at sunset, the time of your coming out from Egypt. You are to cook and eat it at the place at a night your God chooses, then you will turn around in the morning and journey home. For six days you are to eat matzah. On the seventh day there is to be a solemn gathering for Adonai your God. On it you are to do no work. Seven weeks you are to count for yourself. From the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain, you will begin to count seven weeks. And what we're counting is the Omer uh, when we do that up to Shavuot or, or Pentecost. Then you will keep the feast of Shavuot to Adonai your God with a measure of a free will offering from your hand, which you are to give according to how Adonai your God blesses you. So you will rejoice before Adonai your God in the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell. You, your son and your daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow in your midst. You will remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you are to take care and do these statutes. So. So these are the, the harvest festivals that, that are being um, addressed. You are to keep the Feast of Sukkot seven days after gathering in the produce from your threshing floor and wine press. So that's the last of the seven commanded feasts of God. Of course, before that, we have um, the Feast of Trumpets, and then we have Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. And then the last one is the Feast of Sukkot. The, as far as the fall, the fall feast. So you will rejoice in your feast, you, your son, your and your daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow within your gates. Seven days you will feast to Adonai your God in the place he chooses, because Adonai your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hand, and you will be completely filled with joy. Three times a year all your males are to appear before Adonai your God in the place he chooses at the Feast of Matzah, that's during, during the Passover week, the Feast of Shavuot, and the Feast of Sukkot. No one should appear before Adonai empty-handed, the gift of each man's hand according to the blessing Adonai your God has given you. And that is the end of the Torah portion. We're going to do a recap on that. So in last week's parashat, Akev, Moses promised the children of Israel that they would prosper in the promised land if they fulfilled the mitzvah, the commandments of the Torah. He also described the rewards of fulfilling those commandments and the exile associated with forsaking them. So this week begins with an appeal to the people to choose a path in life that leads to blessing. So um, the blessing, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. So parashat re'e. Behold or see. And it reveals that this, the parashat reveals that God has endowed each of us with free will and the ability to make choices for good or for evil, for blessing or for curse. And, and we will, we also have the free will, free will to choose or not to choose Yeshua as our Lord and Savior. And we'll get into that in the second part with the, with an altar call. The future of the nation rests upon their decision. And all Moses can do is show them the way. So these are the two courses that were presented to Israel and each uh, was free to choose. A life of obedience to God and his commandments will lead to certain blessing, but turning away from Adonai into idolatry will surely bring curses on the individual and the nation. And as, as we, you 
heard over and over that warning of not straying from Adonai to fall into the ways of the world and, and picking up their ways of worshiping their gods or, or even worshiping their gods. And it was warned and warned over and over. So I'm sure they totally understood as they were going into the land, um, hearing Moses's words, but it didn't take long for them to fall away, unfortunately. Ed and I wants us to have the vision to see that the choices we make in life create consequences with which we are required to live. And God placed a special calling upon the nation of Israel to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood. And that was seen in Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And they were not to worship at a night in the way the pagans were worshiping their gods, because what they were doing uh, was an abomination to God. So one of the heathen practices forbidden for God's people is the eating or drinking of blood. The blood is the life. So we are not to do that. That has not changed. We should not be eating or drinking blood. This prohibition uh, prevents the despicable practice of eating something while it's alive and even cannibalism. It underlies the sanctity of life and the importance of compassion to all creatures, great and small. And verse 25, also um, in, in chapter 12 of Deuteronomy, uh, basically repeated, do not eat it, do not eat the blood, so that it may go well with you and your children after you. Notice here the consequences of obedience. We do what is right in the eyes of Adonai. We and our children have a bright future. What a promise. That's something to hold on to. So, again, it was it, that was repeated. The blood libel. The main purpose of the, the method of slaughter and salting of meat is to drain away the blood, since biblically kosher meat must have all the blood drained out of it before eating. It's a bitter irony that the one people whose faith forbids the eating of blood would suffer from the anti-Semitic allegations of blood libel, false claims by non-Jews that Jews perform ritual murder using human blood for Jewish rich, religious purposes, and that does not happen. One such lie invented to incite hatred um, actually um, toward, towards the Jewish people is that Jews use human blood to bake matzah for Passover. And that's not true either. It just simply does not have yeast in it. And it's like a crack. It, it looks, the matzah that I have looks like a cracker and it has stripes on it actually. From the Middle Ages until recent times, this fiction was used to provoke outrage among the masses, which led to uh, millions of, of of our people being massacred for no reason at all. In 1935, Nazi leaders infamously used the satanic lie of blood libel in their campaign against our people to infect Germany with the hatred of its Jewish population. And believe it or not, there's a lot of that that goes on today. For those wondering if the commandment forbidding, forbidding the eating of blood is relevant for Gentile believers, it's worth noting that such a prohibition was stipulated by the Jerusalem Council, which occurred around 50 AD. In the book of Acts, James, the half-brother of Yeshua, Jesus made the following ruling in Acts chapter 15, verses 19 to 20. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols from sexual immorality from the meat of strangled animals and from blood so yes it does apply to the gentiles as well this command is so important that it is repeated several times in scripture why would scripture devote so much attention to blood blood is the, the life of the body is in its blood. That's stated in Leviticus chapter 11, verse, verse uh, I'm sorry, chapter 17, verse 11. Blood transports the oxygen that keeps the body alive. It also helps 
rid the body of harmful waste products, heals the body through the disease-fighting cells that it carries and repairs the body from injury, among other functions. God also gives an additional, perhaps related reason. Blood is the instrument of atonement. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, we read that the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourself on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. This is where Adonai had given the substitution of that, that, that animal to atone for sin, to actually cover sin. It didn't take it away. Now, Yeshua, furthermore, because of the blood that Yeshua, Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God, shed for sin, atonement was made once and for all for our sins. And that's found in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. Since we now since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? The word of God contained many other commandments. However, the highest expression of our obedience to God also is loyalty. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong in them whose heart is committed or loyal to him. God is actually on the lookout over all the earth for loyal, committed people. He requires such unwavering allegiance that he says in, in, this, in the Torah portion that even if someone's closest relatives and friends should try to entice them to secretly seek after and serve other gods, the enticer must be put to death. That was that in the ancient in, in the ancient days that was done. Any attempt to seduce a, a person away from the one true God carried the most severe penalty in the Tanakh or the Old Testament, and that was death by stoning back then. Since Yeshua is widely considered, um, actually by, by, by many, many of the, our people have not accepted him, um, and this, is, this could be taken out of context. Um, it's easy to understand why they object vehemently to any missionary activity, but um, they will they will they will understand in time and many are accepting yeshua as their lord and savior as well the messianic prophe prophecy of zechariah says that the day will come however when yeshua will no longer be seen by jewish people as a foreign god named jesus but as an only son and they will mourn him with great weeping so that is coming they will mourn the one they have pierced Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 says, Then I will pour out a spirit of grace and prayer on the family of David and on the, and on the people of Jerusalem. They will look on me, whom they have pierced, and mourn for him as for an only son. They will grieve bitterly for him as for a firstborn son who has died. And it's interesting to note that this messianic prophecy specifically states that the wives will mourn separately since only the Orthodox denomination have the custom of separating men and women during religious rituals and worship. This perhaps suggests that the Orthodox Jews will come to recognize Yeshua is the Messiah once and for all. And we know that that will happen. There's many of our people that have already come to accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The rest of the parasha deals with the laws of holiness in Israel as a holy nation unto the Lord. The Hebrew word, as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, for holy is kadosh, which means to be set apart or sanctified for dedicated service. Out of all the nations on the face of the earth, God chose Israel to be his own special treasure, segula. And that's S-E-G-U-L-A-H. First Peter chapter two verse nine says, "All true followers of Yeshua are also to be God's chosen people, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light." That's for all of us that are born again and saved through the blood of Yeshua. Those who were non-Jews have been grafted 
into the olive tree of the Jewish blessings. That does not mean you replaced. That means you're grafted in and you're part of the commonwealth of Israel, becoming fellow inheritors of the covenant of God. This is where people twist the word and they go off and they say, oh, the church has replaced Israel. No, it did not. Read it again. It is scriptural. So it's. We see that in Romans 11, verse 17, but if some of the branches were broken off and you, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and become a partaker of the root of the olive tree with its richness. You were grafted in when you accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. You did not replace the natural. You were grafted in, though. Because there's some natural that actually accept Yeshua as Lord and Savior. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 11. Actually, 11, we're going to read 11 to 13. Um, actually, our, our ministry, Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA, are, is based on this. Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. We are not denominational. We're basically Messianic believers, both Jew and non-Jew. Therefore, keep in mind that once you, Gentiles in the flesh, were called, uncircum uh, were called uncircumcision by those called circumcision, which, it, which is performed on flesh by hand, at that time you were separate from Messiah, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now... In Messiah Yeshua, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Messiah. And I'm going to continue that. For he is our shalom, the one who made the two into one, one who brought Jew and Gentile into one, one family of God and broke down the middle wall of separation. Within his flesh, he made powerless the hostility, the law code of mitzvah contained in regulations. He did this in order to create within himself one new man from the two groups, Jew and Gentile, making shalom and to reconcile both of them to God in one body through the cross by which he put the hostility to death. And he came and proclaimed shalom to you. And now, now he, these are the Gentiles actually being addressed. And he came and proclaimed shalom to you who were far away and shalom to, to those who were near, the Jews. Those who were far away at that point in time were the Gentiles and those who were near were the Jews. He proclaimed shalom to both. For, for through him, we both have access to the Father by the same Ruach, by the same Spirit. So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with God's people, with Israel, and members of God's household. You are now part of the family of God when you're born again and saved. You have been built on the foundation made up of the emissaries and prophets with Messiah Yeshua himself being the cornerstone in him. The whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple for the Lord. In him, you also are being built together in God's dwelling place in the Ruach, in the spirit. So don't get caught up in, in, in false doctrine that says the church replaced the, 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 the people of Israel. Uh, uh, uh. No, not at all. The Bible doesn't even say that. Go back and read it. It's there in black and white. Don't get, don't twist the word of God. And that's, that's what replacement theologists have done. Because they're, all of Israel will be saved. That is also stated in the Bible. Those that are holding out and have not accepted Yeshua, they're, when, when the great tribulation is going on, that's when, when that, that focus will be on those people. Amen. Amen. Paul prayed that the eyes of our understanding would be open to see the hope of our calling in Yeshua. 
And um, he said that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Further on in Ephesians 4, 1, he urges us to walk in a manner worthy of, call, of the calling to which we have been called to. This means we should be making deliberate choices every day to walk in the ways of God. And when we walk in the ways of God, we will live holy lives. Am Kadosh, a holy people. You shall not eat any abominable thing. And that, that was restated in terms of maintaining a holy lifestyle. One of the first aspects that God addresses in the lives of his holy people is Am Kadosh, uh, is food. Biblical dietary laws or kashrut serve to maintain the separateness of God's people from the pagan nations. Certain animals are clean and others are unclean. And the Hebrew word for clean is tahor, T-A-H-O-R, and others are unclean, tamay, T-A-M-A-Y. Unclean meats may be sold to foreigners, but are not permitted for holy people. Later on in the parashat shot, uh, Adonai revealed the holiness expressed itself in love for our neighbor. He commands Israel to be generous in giving to the poor and needy in the land, and not to make things worse for them. And also the Shemitah was addressed. And then I promised that if we obey him in this, that he would bless us in whatever we put our hands to. So, and um, we we should not be looking to trip up those, the, those people that are among us that are struggling. And believers might be missing out on their greatest blessing if they fail to realize the importance of this commandment. Likewise, Ed and I made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was later called Israel, and to their descendants that he will bless those who bless Israel, the Jewish people, and curse those who curse them. That's in Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, and it is still relevant today. In the Brit Kedeshah, the Apostle Paul exhorted Gentile believers in Yeshua to give materially in, in exchange for all they have received spiritually through the Jews, for salvation is of the Jews. Um, and actually, that is in John chapter 4, verse 22. Um, and, and the other uh, that I mentioned is in Romans chapter 15, verses 25 to 27. But just a little extra nugget here on the two directions that were given at the beginning of, of this parasha, um, the blessing and the curse. And they were to be proclaimed on two mountaintops in the land of Mount Gerizim and the Mount, Mount Ebal. Um, so um, I just also want to mention Yeshua, the Messiah, also told us to pass the narrow path that leads to life and the broad path that leads to destruction. Sadly, it seems that few choose the narrow path, most, most walk that broad path of destruction. And this is seen uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Why does Yeshua, who, who is the gate of salvation, tells us that the path of blessing is difficult and that few enter his gate? Because each day we have to make hard choices between what our carnal nature desires, and what is in alignment with the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. To obey God requires that we crucify the desires of our flesh. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Messiah. It is no longer I who live, but Messiah who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Staying on the path of blessing during trials, and this this can be a very hard hard time to time when you're when you're tested. Sadly, human pride, love of sin, and opposition from spiritual forces of darkness keeps many walking the broad path of destruction, preventing them from entering in a, into a life of blessing through obedience to God. As well, too many new believers think that coming to faith in Yeshua and living a life of obedience to God are supposed to make all the problems and trials of life disappear. Yeshua did not promise this. In fact, he assured us that in this life, we will have trouble. He himself was persecuted, as were his followers. Despite that, we need to not be discouraged. We can be of good cheer, joyful in the Lord, 
for he has overcome the world. And, he's, and this is stated in John chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you, ha you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Choosing to obey God's commandments in times of trouble is not always easy, especially when the whole world seems to be going in a different direction. And we can certainly relate to that in our world today. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Decisions, take everything to the Lord in prayer. God wants a relationship with you. And He, if you're born again and saved, he's your heavenly father. And he knows what is the best plan for you. Because he's got, he's got your best will and plan laid out for you. But we need to, we need to lean into him for that answer. So just because the world is running around chaotically, you know, doing things, um, doesn't mean that we're supposed to be participating. Proceed with caution <laughs> is what I say. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And that's not just a, 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 a pat statement. That's truly taking it to the Lord in prayer and waiting for the answer. We need to wait on the will of God, too. Going against the current can take a great deal of exertion and determination. It can wear us out, too, for sure. So it takes great effort to swim against the current. But we need to be separate and holy to God. We are in the world, but not of it. We need to remind ourselves, just because the world is doing this, we don't need to be part of that. We don't need to do what, what everyone else is doing. It's probably not good for us. Even simply making the choice to obey God can be excruciatingly painful. Yeshua experienced this in the Garden of Gethsemane when facing the choice to submit to God even to the point of death on the tree. And he said in Luke 22, verse 42, it was here in the dark valley of decision that the battle was won. When Yeshua said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. This decision was so agonizing for Yeshua that he seemed to sweat drops of blood. And we may not actually sweat drops of blood, but we may come to a crossroad in our lives where we must also decide whether to obey God's will or choose our own way. And the cost may seem beyond our ability to bear, but God, but God has promised that his grace is sufficient for us in every circumstance. Choosing to obey God will lead to blessing. However, we may not receive our full reward until heaven as well. Just to remember that as well. For that reason, we must always live with an eternal perspective, not allowing the trials of life to weaken our faith. James chapter 1, verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. This, the Torah portion emphasizes that the path of blessings include not following false gods or false prophets. All elements of pagan worship must be purged from our lifestyle so that we may be the holy people that God has called us to be. Although many... Um, Many believers consider um, the dietary commands abolished. Yeshua did not support this kind of thinking. He made this astounding statement May, in Matthew um, chapter 5, verses 17 to 19. Don't assume that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches people to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The path of blessing also included giving tithes to the Levites who were dependent on the people for their livelihood because they were not included in the inheritance of the land. Generosity towards the poor is also important. And God said we are to open our hand and our heart to give to the poor in our land. And this is this was found in, in Deuteronomy chapter 15. Prosperity and financial blessing are not simply the result of working hard. Neither is it owed to us because we are believers. 
It is dependent upon exercising the spiritual principles of sowing and reaping. As we give, it will be given back to us. In, in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, God will bless us as we sow generous seeds and giving to the poor and to God's faithful servants. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 10 says, You shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him. You should be a cheerful giver, in other words, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. So again, we can choose the blessing also, um, getting back to blessings and curses, we can choose the blessing of the path to eternal life. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. One of the most important choices each one of us must make is whether or not to receive Yeshua the Messiah as the atonement for all of our sins and through him receive eternal life. And and I will be getting into that with the altar call as well. Um, our messianic redemption, liberation, salvation, entrance into eternal life is not something that we simply read about or hear preached. It is a not so distant reality. When Yeshua returns, he will come on the clouds and every eye will see him. Behold, they will see him. Ra'e. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. And that's in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. This new covenant scripture about the second coming of the Messiah is founded on several messianic prophecies in which the Hebrew prophets also foresee at a night coming with the clouds. Isaiah, many of the prophets saw both the first and the second coming of Yeshua. Isaiah was one of them. Isaiah 19, verse 1, a prophecy against Egypt. See, Adonai, or Yahweh, rides on, on a swift cloud and is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt tremble before him in the heart, so the Egyptians melt with fear. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 says, In my night vision I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. One day, you will all see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. Amen. Until that day comes, may we choose to faithfully and diligently walk on the path of blessing, keeping his commandments and teaching others to do the same. Luke chapter 11, verse 28 said, says, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So we're going to move into um, the half Torah portion, which is Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, chapter uh, chapter 54, verse 1 through chapter 55, verse 13. So we're essentially doing um, chapters 54 and 55. Your husband is your maker. Sing, barren one who has not given birth. Burst into singing and shout, you who have not travailed. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married one says Adonai, enlarge the place of your tent, stretch out your tabernacle curtains, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread out to the right hand and to the left. Your offspring will possess the nations and will resettle the desolate cities. So we know that um, the warning that was given, the warning that was given by Moses has actually occurred. As, as we read, um, well, this is the prophecy also of Isaiah, but we also know that, yes, um, both the northern and the southern kingdoms were carried into captivity. Your offspring will possess the nations and you will resettle the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed, nor cringe, for you will not be disgraced, for you will forget the shame of your youth and you will remember the reproach of your widowhood no more. For your maker is your husband. Adonai Sabaot is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He will be called God of all the earth. For Adonai has called you back like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of one's youth that is rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I deserted you, but I will regather you with great compassion 
in a surge of anger. I hid my face from you a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says Adonai, your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me, for as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more cover the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you, nor will I rebuke you. Though the mountains depart and the hills be shaken, my love will not depart from you, nor will my covenant of peace be shaken. So there's another answer to those that uh, fall into the false doctrine of replacement theology. This is a forever covenant. It says Adonai who has compassion on you. Afflicted one, storm-tossed, unconsoled, behold, I set your stones in antimony. Lay your foundations with sapphire, make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystal, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children will be taught by Adonai. Your children will have great shalom. Your children will have great peace. No weapon formed against you. In righteousness you will be established. You will be far from oppression, for you will not fear, and from terror for you, for it will not come near you. Behold, any one fiercely attacking is not from me. In other words, it's from it's from the evil one. Whoever stirs up strife with you will fail because of you and will fall because of you. I'm sorry. Behold, I created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its work. And I created the destroyer to ruin. No weapon formed against you will prosper and you will condemn every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of Adonai's servants. Their vindication is from me. It is a declaration of Adonai. Chapter 55, trees of the field will clap their hands. Ho, oh, everyone who's, who thirsts, come to the water, and you who have no money, come by and eat. Come by wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen diligently, diligently to me and eat what is good, and delight yourself in abundance, and clean your ear, and come to me, listen, so that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy loyalty to David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you will summon a nation you do not know, and a nation that, that did not know you will run to you because of Adonai your God, and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek at an eye while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous one his thoughts. For let him return to Adonai so he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. It is a declaration of Adonai. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there without having watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to sow and bread to eat, so my word will be that goes out from my mouth, and it will not return to me in vain. And some Bible say it, it, it will not return void. What, what, what Adonai sent out will, will come back. Uh, it will accomplish what it, what it has intended. But, but will accomplish what I intend and will succeed in what I send it for. Yes, you will go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and, and the hills will break forth before you singing, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, a cypress will come up, and instead of the briar, a myrtle will come up, and it will be a memorial to Adonai as an everlasting sign that will never be cut off. That is the end of the half Torah portion, and we're going to do a, a quick recap, and then we're going to close in, in prayer and take a break and come back with the Brit Kedeshah. Again, uh, with the Torah portion, see or behold, par Parashat Ra'e, R-E apostrophe E-H. See, says Moses to Benai Israel, I place before you today a blessing and a curse, the blessing that will come when when they fulfill God's commandments and the curse if they abandon them. These should be proclaimed on Mount Gerizim and Mount Abel when the people cross over into the Holy Land. 
a temple should be established in the place that, that Adonai will choose to make dwell his name there where the people should bring their sacrifices to him. It is forbidden to make offerings to Adonai in any other place. It is permitted to slaughter animals elsewhere, not as a sacrifice, but to eat their meat. But the blood may not be eaten. A false prophet, prophet or one who entices others to worship idols should be put to death as, as an idolatrous city must be destroyed. And it also uh, addressed even family members and those close to us, you know, close to the people that, that may try to entice them to go against Adonai and worship other gods. The identifying signs for kosher animals and fish and, and, and birds um, were also repeated, and that was given in Leviticus chapter 11, and this was repeated here. A tenth of all produce is to be eaten in Jerusalem or else exchanged for money with which food is purchased and eaten there. In certain years, this tithe is given to the poor instead. Firstborn cattle and sheep are to be offered in the temple and their meat eaten by the priests, the Kohanim. The mitzvah or charity obligates uh, giving to a needy person within their community uh, with a gift or a loan. And on a sabbatical year occurring every seventh year, all loans were be, to be forgiven. So the debt, whether it was paid or not, it was over. It was canceled. And all indentured servants that were working off debt um, were to be set free after six years of service. And this parashat uh, concluded with the laws of the three pilgrim, pilgrimage festivals of the, of the Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot, uh, when all should go to see and be seen before Adonai in the Holy Temple. And this is also, um, we, will, we will be doing that uh, in the Messianic era to go to worship the king in Jerusalem. For he will be tabernacling with us. Amen? Amen. So, um, the half Torah, this week's half Torah, is the third of a series of seven half Torah of consolation. And these, there's seven of them, and they will, they, they begin, we began this uh, following Tisha B'Av, um, and will continue until Rosh Hashanah. Adonai addressed the afflicted and storm-tossed Jerusalem, who has not been comforting comforted, assuring that um, her people will be restored to full glory. The foundation walls and ground of Jerusalem will be laid with precious stones, and her children will be disciples of Adonai and will enjoy abundant shalom, peace. And any weapon formed against her will fail. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. The prophet then invites the thirsty to acquire water, namely those who are thirsty for spirituality, should study the quenching words of Torah. He promises the nation an everlasting covenant similar to that made with King David. This is also alluding to the Messiah, David's descendant, who would be revered by all the nations of the world. And that is the end of the Torah and half Torah. We're going to we're going to close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this powerful word. We thank you um, for the strength in this word. And and we know your heart and, and your heart is toward us. And you expect that our heart is to be towards you 100% and not falling to the ways of the world and, and worshiping like other religions do, that we are just be set apart and be holy to you. And we thank you for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will be doing. We give you our praise. We give you all the honor. We give you glory in the mighty name, the name above all names, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, the one and only Messiah, Savior of the world. Amen and amen. Take a short break and we will be back with the second part of Shabbat.